Alright, so I've installed a flight controller in my RC car so that I can get the on-screen display and I can see all the telemetry in my video feed. But my main goal was to get the RSSI value in the OSD feed so that I can have a look at the signal strength of my UHF system and I can avoid going out of range. So that's one thing. But I can also monitor the battery voltage and the capacity. This is how I've installed it in my Axial ADXL. And this is a part of the long range FPV project. So I have my MFD link UHF receiver and it has a dedicated channel for RSSI. As you can see, it's over here. And I've only connected the ground and the signal wire to the flight controller. So the flight controller that I'm using is a Omnibus F4 V2 Pro, which supports Betaflight OSD. So in this diagram, you can see how I have the flight controller wired up. Basically, I'm only using the video in and out and the RSSI pads on the flight controller, whereas my ESC and servo are controlled from the receiver directly. So I'm using a battery to power up the flight controller. And now I'll turn on my UHF transmitter. So I'm using the relay method as I showed in my previous video. So and using the FlySky 2.4 GHz receiver and then using that as a radio to transmit uh, radio signals from the UHF transmitter to the UHF receiver so So I'll connect the flight controller to my computer. So this is how I've set up the flight controller. You can see that I have the RSSI value over here, which is at 89% right now. And because I'm using the Omnibus F4, I have the current sensor on it. So I can monitor the battery voltage and the capacity. So you can see that RSSI signal strength is enabled. So if your receiver supports the RSSI channel, then you can connect that to your flight controller to get the RSSI value on your OSD. I have the OSD enabled in the configuration as well. This is all I have in the OSD that I've enabled. So I have the date and time over here, the RSSI signal strength over here the battery cell voltage the capacity of the battery in mh along with my channel name over here so, so that's all i have in the osd display i've set my rssi strength alarm to 10 and the battery capacity to 1500 because i'm using a 1500 image lipo battery so so the flight controller is safe inside this box over here that the yeti xl has and it's called the fuel safe box so i've used a double side tape to just stick it on the top panel and I've zip tied it so it doesn't move or fall apart and one thing that I'd like to mention is usually there's just one single pad on a flight controller labeled RSSI so mostly you will just connect your signal wire from the RSSI channel to that particular RSSI pad but you should also use your ground wire from the same RSSI channel of your receiver and then place it on some ground that's available on your flight controller so that you can get the accurate reading of the RSSI value. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And this is how it looks once I've covered the box. That way the flight controller is not exposed and it's safe inside. So, so unlike in my last long range FPV video where I lost the UHF connection at about 700 meters or so. At that point of time I did not have the RSSI reading with me. So I couldn't monitor the signal strength. But now that I have the 
flight controller setup and the OST and the RSSI working that shouldn't be a problem and and that way I can always stay in range and have control of my RC car so that's what this was all about and and if you're interested you can have a look at that diagram which I had in the previous section of this video and you can take a look at that or if you have any suggestions you can comment them below so yeah thanks a lot for watching and please make sure to like the video and also subscribe to the channel if you are new so i'll see you guys in the next one